and um, let's get going. If you have a block, grab it and um, I'll, I'll be using it. If not, don't worry. There's other things you can use as a block. So like say maybe like a, like a solid um, reusable water bottle or I'm just kind of looking around, around my basement here, like maybe, I don't know, um, a paper towel holder, <laughs> things like that. I've got some old DVDs over there that could probably work too. So, um, so we'll use this. Again, if not, I've been used to teaching without it lately, just because we haven't had any shared props at the studio, because we're trying to keep everything, you know, as least things transmitted as possible. So you'll be fine without a block. If you have it, grab it. So we're going to get started. We start with pranayama breathing. So pranayama breathing. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Oh, hey, Taisi. Okay, she introduced herself. Okay, awesome. Yay. Oh, and Chandra invited you. Oh, thank you for inviting people, Chandra. Yeah, pass the word, you guys. Any class labeled um, Native Community Flow is open to anyone. Native or not, anyone in any community is welcome to come for free. So um, yeah, just keep your eyes um, peeled for those on the schedule. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here, Ticey. And you can show your video or not because you're not in the in the training program. If you're on the training program, you wanna see me. So, um, all right, cool. So we start with this breathing. And so if you had a chance to look at the manual, I showed you um, a couple of different ways. So the traditional way that we do it, I'll demonstrate. And lately we haven't been doing this in the studio just because it's kind of like a big, aerating of our fumes everywhere and we're trying to keep our fumes very close in to you know just because we are in a pandemic still so this is what it looks like so we start with the feet together toes and heels touch and y'all can just relax for a second so we start in that equal standing position thighs nice and tight stomach in shoulders back the jawbone back towards the neck lengthen up through the crown of the head i'm going to bring my knuckles underneath the chin and just relax the shoulders down elbows come forward away from the chest and y'all can still relax for a second. I'm gonna do one round just to demo. And I inhale. Elbows up and exhale. Like so. So it takes a few rounds if you're not quite used to it. If you want to do the breathing similar that we've done in the studio, you could come into child's pose if you wanna try this breathing exercise. Go for it. You could do another breathing that I teach, which is arms overhead, palms together, and hands, palms come down to heart center. I'm going to keep going with the normal breathing. And I actually might come a little bit closer just so you guys can see it. And so, yeah, if you're standing, best you can feet together. Some of us have bigger legs. Feet don't exactly come together. Just do what you do where you can, where you know your body feels aligned. You feel like you're your hips are right over your knees, which are you know pretty much supported and right um, close to or right under your under your hips, knees, feet aligned. So we're going to start with the knuckles together and elbows the best you can away from the chest. Elbows might not come all together all the way together today, and that's okay. And let's begin. Inhale, inhale, breathe in by the nose. Start to bring your gaze forward to the front of your space. Elbows all the way up. And exhale. So it's an H-A, ha sound, like you're trying to fog up the ceiling. Bring your elbows forward. Look back behind you, elbows together. Inhale, head down. Elbows up. Exhale, head up. Elbows together. Inhale, head down. So as you lift the elbows up, you're creating this big open space Space, this cavity, almost cavern for your lungs to expand. Exhale, head up, push your head back. Knuckles stay with the chin. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Look back behind you, elbows together. Inhale, head down. That's it. Elbows out and up. So they're kind of like wings. Elbows all the way up towards the ceiling. Good panther. Exhale, head up. <sighs> yeah, so you're like fogging up the ceiling now. There, elbows forward, elbows together. These look good. Inhale, head down. Let's do a couple more. Elbows out and exhale, head up. Relax the shoulders. Bring your elbows away from your chest if you can. Elbows forward. And last one, inhale, head down. Last cycle right here. Breathe in by the nose. Use your throat so it sounds kind of like the ocean. Elbows up, exhale.
and elbows together and relax your arms down by your side. So a lot of times when I teach beginners, that's kind of the hardest thing. But what that does is not only create breath, starts to ground us with breath, but starts to open up the shoulders and actually starts to give yourself a little back bend using the neck. So the neck is getting that back bend, right? So we start with our first flow, which is a sun salutation or um, Surya Namaskar. So let's start with feet together, toes, heels touch, and you'll bring your arms over your head. Good, and exhale, take a forward fold. So we take some time in this forward fold, bend the knees as much as you need to. You could even separate the feet, separate the feet, bend the knees, like seriously, bend, bend the knees. You can grab your opposite elbows or bring your hands down onto the mat. And just allow the spine a moment to lengthen and not be so tense. So you're actually using the weight of the head to help draw the spine a little bit longer here. You got it. These look great. All right, so we're gonna do two sets of this Surya Namaskar or the sun salutation. So let's bring the right leg back into a low lunge. I'm going to go knees this whole practice. So if you want to elevate the knee, you're more than welcome to. If you want to leave it down, you're more than welcome to as well. I'm going to lengthen through the spine. So lengthening through the crown of the head. And I'm going to bring that left foot back. So some folks might even need to use the hand a little bit to bring the foot back. So I'm in all fours. I'm going to shift a little bit forward because we're getting ready to do a tricep push-up. I'm going to come down, keep the elbows in close, right back up down halfway, then inhale, up dog or cobra. So you could come to cobra here or extend the arms for up dog, either way. And then I'm gonna shift to the knees to all fours and then tuck the toes under, lift the hips up into downward facing dog, downward facing dog. So most of you have been in these classes and, and you've been able to spend a little bit of time in down dog breathe. So anytime someone feels like, oh, this is just too much for my wrist, maybe they have some wrist issues, they could come down to all, all fours. That's perfectly fine. But really working eventually to lift the hips up to create some length in the spine. Some teachers might teach like, oh, it's a great posture to lengthen the back of the legs, the calves, but there's really better stretches for that. I really think like to think about this as lengthening the spine. We're gonna bring the right foot up in between the hands again. Back knee can be up or down. And yeah, it can take some time to get the foot up there in between the hands. I'm gonna look at the floor right just beyond my mat to keep my neck in line with the rest of the spine. And left foot steps up to meet the right. Hands to heart center, bend the knees as much as you need to. Suck the stomach and round up, stretch up and drop your head back. Just by dropping your head back, great back bend. If you can go back further, go for it. Push the hips a little bit forward, lift the chest up, go back more. Good. And come on back. Start to come forward, fold, hands down to the mat, left leg back, low lunge. Good. And right foot back, high plank, or Lope, or knees, <laughs> knees plank, I guess you'd call it. Take it down halfway back up. Chaturanga again, inhale up dog or cobra. I'm gonna opt for a cobra tonight. And then back to down dog. I'm gonna flow through all fours, tuck the toes under and come into downward facing dog. Breathe. Good. Nice. So we did that all on one side, and we're gonna walk the feet up to the hands. Bring the hands to heart center, round up, stretch up, drop your head back, take a back bend. Good, exhale, forward fold. Yes, hands down to the mat, left leg back, knee down, right foot back. So I'm in that push up again, lowering down, inhale, up dog or cobra, and exhale, down dog. Yes, it's lift up, breathe. And y'all, left leg up, bring it through. You can bring the knee down. What I just did, I'm pretty sure I just did that like twice. And that's totally gonna happen. <laughs> it's totally gonna happen. That's okay. So here, we're really just slowly opening up the hips. 
shoulders away from the ears, neck is long. And bring the right foot up, hands to heart center, let's round up, stretch up. We're gonna go right back to the right leg. Good, take a little back bend though. Nice. And come to equal standing. Take a breath here, inhale, arms sweep up. And exhale, forward fold. Hands down to the mat. Right leg back, low lunge. Left foot back, plank, chaturanga, high plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. All right. So bring your right foot in between the hands. So back knee again can be down. Then bring your right hand to my right hip. So it's on the bony part of the hip back here. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Now start to twist my chest towards the right leg. You can keep the hand here or bring the top arm up. Look up and hand back down to the mat. Left foot steps up, hand starts in a round up. Good, stretch up, drop your head back, take a back bend. Exhale, fold, hands back down to the mat. So this is just like what we did, going a little bit faster, left leg back, low lunge. Right foot back, plank, take it down, back up. Elbows stay in close here, y'all. Elbows in close. Chaturanga, inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Breathe. Good. Inhale, bring the left leg up and bring it through. So I'm going to stay on my back knee or you can elevate it either way. This time, left hand to left hip. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, twist, chest opens towards the left side or the left knee and look up. If it feels okay for the shoulder, you could bring the left arm up. If it starts to feel, woo, just too crunchy in there, keep the hand on the hip. Yeah. And hand back down to the mat, right foot steps up, hands to heart, center round up, stretch up. Let's take another back bend. Drop your head back. Now here with the back bends, a lot of people get afraid of these. Look back, look back, and already there's a back bend happening in your neck. As your body starts to, really as your mind starts to trust this posture a little bit more, you can go back even further. Nice. And come back to center. So come back to equal standing, palms together, toes, heels touch. Good. So that was our sun salutation. Move into our, our moon salutation. Chandra Namaskar, inhale, arms up. We have two Chandras on the call too, that's pretty cool. Forward fold. Now this time you can do a little halfway lift, lengthening the spine. Hands can be on the mat, they can be on the shin. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up and lengthen. You can walk back to plank or hop back into low plank. And I'm gonna demo that real quick. So this is one thing. If you do feel like, hey, I think I'm ready to hop back, make sure your arms are like shock. So if you have a mountain bike, kind of see the, or dirt bike, whatever, seeing those shocks work. So my upper body, my arms are serving like that, those shocks, so I kind of over-exaggerated there. But main thing is you don't want to jump back to locked arms. Yeah, so over time it can cause a little wear there. So, all right, lower down, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. All right. We go into our crescent lunge here, and I'm just gonna do one set of this today. Bring your right foot forward, stay up on the back toes. Again, you could always bring the back knee down and come up to crescent lunge. Yes. So knee can be down, can be up. Main thing here is, it's, it's, I always notice this for me, no matter how long I've been doing it, get an overarch in the spine. Right, I'm like, yeah, I'm just kind of sticking the belly out, the ribs out. I want to start to bring that back just so I can feel more of a stretch here in the front of my hip. Nice and hands back down to the mat. Right leg back, downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Let me see y'all for a second. Yeah, I do forget. Um, Bugsy, maybe bring your hands in a little bit. They're, they're pretty wide. And just see how that feels. I know you've got that alignment, Matt. Do you normally do a, a really wide hand? So maybe if you have like a shoulder, yeah, okay, okay. And yeah, just really start to feel around y'all. 
sometimes we have patterns which we have for a reason and sometimes like i don't even know i had that pattern <laughs> and he'll bring the left leg up and bring it through for crescent lunge good so then you can be down can be up when you're ready arms reach up yeah good so i don't know if you guys here were like why is this called crescent lunge so um i don't know if you guys have that the bitmoji app they actually put, I don't know how long ago it was, they put um, the shapes of how a lot of these got their names. Um, a lot of these poses, how they got their names. And this one has a great one. You can see the person doing this posture in like a crescent moon, it's pretty cool. And hands back down, left foot back, downward facing dog. Breathe. And yeah, so this is a moon salutation. So creating that crescent moon shape with our body. Awesome. We're gonna go straight into our warrior two. So inhale, bring the right leg up and bring the right foot in between the hands, plant the back foot down. When you got that, windmill the arms open into your warrior two. There you go. So taking some time here. So eventually this right leg, the right thigh will be parallel to the floor, eventually. Arms straight, parallel to the floor, stomach in, shoulders relax. Good. So your gaze here is over your front fingertips. Yep. So your chin is coming close to the shoulder. And then we bring the gaze over the back fingertips. So now the chin is close to the shoulder here. We flip the palms open towards the front. Keep the lower body where it is, torso even where it is. Just turn the arms. Now you can take a few seconds to stretch down and stretch up. Now notice, so if you see my line, there's one straight line from the top of my head all the way down to the outer edge of my left foot. What can happen, we do a little tilt up. I don't know if you guys remember like back when in the day when I had my senior pictures, like this was my pose. There's a big, huge white 9-3 behind me for class of 93. So that's not the pose. We got to bring it down, stretch up and stretch down and bring your hands back down to the mat. Right foot back, downward facing dog. So it's a hip opener. So it's a very common thing that we're gonna wanna uh, bump the hip up a little bit to avoid the discomfort in the posture. Inhale, left leg up. Bring the left foot through windmill, the arms open to warrior two. So gaze comes over the front fingertips. I'm gonna check y'all out for a second. Yeah, so bring the gaze over the front fingertips. Nice. Gosh, go. These are great. Beautiful, Josie. Nice. Now bring the gaze over the back fingertips. Now flip the palms open. Keep looking at the back fingertips and just tilt the arms. Like your legs and torso are not moving at all. Yeah. Stretch up, stretch down. Now the two arms here in one line. Yes. Great, Taylor. Stretch up, stretch down, push hips forward. Now gently guide the left knee back, push the left knee back with the help of the left elbow. Yes, and bring your hands back down to the mat and bring the leg back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. So here we start to open up the hips a little bit differently. Inhale, bring the right leg up, leg straight, foot flex. Now anytime, say you have, you're with a friend who's a beginner, you bring it to the knee totally fine and then stack the hips point the toe still press into both hands equally yeah good so knee can be down or it can be in that three-legged dog either way now bring your hips back to level and left foot steps underneath your heart if your knee's down you still bring excuse me right foot pardon me right foot underneath the heart then both legs start to straighten hands to hips come on up this is where you could use the block Inhale, left arm up and bring your hand down to block or your foot or the mat or your shin. So here I want to get my spine. You want to get your spine too, parallel to the floor as you can. So that's why a prop is good. We're getting ready to twist the spine. That's why I want it super straight. So you want to straighten something before you twist it. Now exhale, twist. Chest opens towards the right side of the room. And the upper inner thighs start to squeeze towards one another. So instead of kind of letting the left, or excuse me, right butt just kind of go wherever it wants to, 
You had to really squeeze the upper inner thighs together so you could still like lay a glass of water on your tailbone. Now, if it feels okay for your shoulders and your shoulders are pretty much stacked, you could bring the right arm up. If that feels not so good, bring the hand back down. Now bring both hands back down to the mat and bring your palms together. Just cross your thumbs. Just cross the thumbs. Inhale, round up. You got it. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale, round down. Tuck your chin to your chest, forehead to knee. So this is standing separate leg, head to knee. Separate your hands. Most people need to separate the hands for balance. Suck your stomach in, round down, forehead to knee. So the main thing here is not so much the stretch. We'll do that here in a second. It's this forward compression with the forehead on the knee. So you're compressing especially all these organs on the front side of the body. This is how it's the tourniquet effect that's working. All the organs and glands on the front side of the body. Good. Straighten the front leg. Palms together. Inhale, round up. All the way up. That's it. Now bring your arms behind you. And grab your elbows. I'll show you the grip. You can either grab your elbows or bring your hands into reverse namaskar. Yes. So reverse namaskar is that prayer position behind you. So either way is fine. Either way is fine. This time legs and spine stay straight. So no rounding of the spine. Legs stay straight and come forward fold. And keep the neck in line with the rest of the spine, both legs straight. You're still kind of spiraling the upper inner thighs towards one another to keep that stability. You got it. Nice. And bring your hands down to the mat. Step your right foot back to meet the left or downward facing the dog. Good, breathe. So just for the sake of time tonight, we're kind of combining the third vinyasa, the first and second sets. Inhale, bring the left leg up and, uh, excuse me, straighten the leg, flex the foot, flex the foot. So you're in the street like a dog. Again, knee could be down, totally could be down. Stack the hips, point the toe. So the left hip stacks on top of the right hip and you're still pressing into both hands equally so that your shoulders are best in one line as they can. Bring your hip back to level and left foot steps underneath the heart for revolved triangle. Good. Bring your hands to your hips, come on up to standing. Inhale, right arm, reach it up long. And bring your hand down, block. You got a block, mat, foot, shin. Get the spine parallel to the floor. So if you can see yourself in a camera, you'll be able to see a little bit better if your spine is actually parallel to the floor. And he'll lengthen the spine, now twist. Chest opens towards the left side of your room. And if the two shoulders stack, left arm can reach up. So try to get the two arms best they can in one line and look up. Nice, bring your hands back down to the mat and bring your palms together in front of your left foot. Just cross the thumbs, inhale, round up. Good, now backside foot's at about a 45 degree angle. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, start to round down. Actually look at your belly button as you're rounding down and bring the forehead to the knee. Separate your hands beyond your foot and press into the floor. Try to get the forehead higher on the knee. So this is a compression posture. You're actually creating a little oomph with your hands into the floor to get your forehead higher on your knee. So you might even feel a little cramping on the front side of the body as you do this. So you're especially compressing the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland that gets this kind of work, this compression or extension is going to help you have um, better Metabolism, sleep cycle, temperature regulation, hormonal balance, all that good stuff that the thyroid do it, does. So slowly start to straighten the leg, palms together again, just cross your thumbs, inhale, round up. That's it. Good. And bring your arms behind you, grab your elbows, or come into that reverse prayer with the palms together behind you. Inhale, lengthen the spine and come down. This time you come down flat spine, Straight legs, straight spine, your head, your neck in line with the rest of the spine. 
Yeah, so a little bit right hip forward. So that right inner thigh is coming close to the left inner thigh to keep everything, the hips level, core engaged. You got it. Nice. And bring your hands back down to the mat. And right foot steps up to meet the left. Good. And bring your hands, heart center round on up. Come into equal standing position. All right. Utkatasana. So we're going to move on into some of the floor, or excuse me, standing postures, more static postures. Utkatasana, I'll show you from the front. So right foot step to the right. So you're a hip width. So feel where the bony parts of your hips are and then line your knees up right underneath there. And then line your ankles right underneath there. Good, arms up, parallel to the floor. So triceps nice and tight, stomach in, sit down like you're sitting in a tiny little kindergartner chair. You got it, stomach in. Now there is an upper, there is an arch here in the spine. So bring the upper body back. Good, keep the arms strong. So you're stretching forward with the fingertips. Your back is kind of stretching back towards that tiny imaginary chair and your upper body's leaning back. Inhale, come back up. We got a second part. Stand up on your toes maximum. Yes, yeah, so it's like Barbie feet, tippy toes. Stomach in, slowly come down, start to bend the knees. Keep the arms strong, stomach in. Imagine there's a wall right behind you and your hips and head are touching that wall the whole time. These are great, good Bugsy. Knees up, heels up, upper body back, come up high on the toes, knees up, and you'll come back up. Great. So guys, don't worry so much if you come down maybe an inch. Great, yeah, if your legs are strengthening, perfect. Come up just a little bit on the toes, knees together, stomach in, slowly come down. Here again, you might come down just an inch, that's fine. Some of you may come so that the thighs are parallel to the floor. Keep the stomach in. Continue to lengthen up the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Keep the arms strong. So the arms are really gonna be your counterbalance. They're gonna help you stay in the posture. Good, Liz. Inhale, slowly come back up. Yes, arms down by your side. And relax, breathe. We got another step. All right, right foot step to the right. Arms up, stomach in, sit down in the chair. A little shorter set. Good, press through the heels, but still keep the big toe mounds down, stomach in, upper body back, lean back, inhale, come back up. Sit up on your toes. Find a focal point straight ahead to focus. So you probably don't need to look at the screen right now. You did this once before. Stretch everything up towards the ceiling. You're on your tippy toes, sit down on top of the toes. Knees up, heels up, upper body back, high on the toes. Knees up, sit down in the chair. And he'll come back up. Those are great. Heels come down. Third part, come up a little bit. Knees together. This posture is for the knees, y'all. Slowly come down. So healing knees, working through knee injuries. This is great. Just don't go further than your knees say you can go. So here with the knees together, actually the knees serve as breaks. And they will let you know how far you can go in the posture. Yep. And he'll slowly come back up. Knees together, spine straight and arms down, excellent. All right, eagle pose, Garudasana. It's a twisty one. So inhale, bring your arms over your head and right arm, bring it underneath the left arm. So sometimes it takes a little momentum. So I'd rather see somebody here with the right, and there's gaps there, and the, but the right arm's underneath the elbow instead of here. Here, nothing really happening with that hug. I mean, it's kind of good to give yourself hugs, especially during the pandemic. Um, but not a lot happening for the shoulder joint. So yeah, just use a little more momentum and you might come here. You might be able to bring the palms together. But yeah, just so the right elbow is underneath the left elbow. So start to pull the elbows down. Good. Nice, Molly. Sit down like you're sitting in that tiny chair that you just did. Upper body back. Stay low. Right leg lift up high as you can over the left leg. Yes, Carla. That's it, Josie. Yes, Liz. Great eagle, Liz. Yes, these are great. Sit down, pull your elbows down. That's it, slowly knees right, just a little bit. Upper body left. 
feet, knees up, both hands, everything one line. Upper body back more, change. Arms up, left arm under the right, cross and twist. Pull the elbows down, sit down. Sit down low, stay low. Now left leg lifted up high as you can over the right. So you're sitting down low and you're just doing the best you can. So eventually one day the foot might come underneath the calf muscle. It might stay out to the side for a while. It's okay. You keep crossing, you keep twisting. Sit down, stomach in. That's it, upper body back more. And change, arms up. Woo, and arms down by your side. All right, I'm gonna come to the long way of my mat. We're gonna work on a separate leg stretch and he'll bring your arms over your head and right foot step to the right. Big step, pretty big, about four feet. Stomach in, bend your body down. So where we're going here is into a wide-legged down dog. Wide-legged down dog. So walk your hands way out in front. I don't even know if I'm still on the screen. Where am I? <laughs> am I still there? I have no idea. Okay. So I'm walking my hands way out. Oh, there I am. Yes. So slowly starting to straighten the leg. And this is what a lot of us struggle with is tight hamstrings. And just like we've been talking, it might not necessarily even be tight hamstrings, it could be a tight low back, right? So just bring in the hands out in front, just like a down dog, but what legs are super wide. Starting to rock that weight a little bit forward, lengthening by lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. Good. And walk the hands slowly back. And you could bring your hands back to it. Keep your legs, keep your feet where they are. This time, this time arms out. Good. And this time you could actually either keep your arms out, two options, arms out or arms behind. So arms behind, you're gonna interlock the hands behind you. So either way, it's fine. Stomach in, bend your body down. Now, there might not be any mobility in the shoulders right now, or very little mobility in the shoulders, and that's okay. Just keep the arms where they are. If there is mobility, you can start to bring the arms overhead. If you could bring the arms overhead, breathe. Yes, these are all good. Excellent. Good, and slowly start to come on back up. Great. And feet back together and arms down by your side. Awesome. So next is standing bow pulling pose. We could spend so much time on this one. This is a great one. Can, so, I, yes. I have, I have a question about that one. Um, yeah. When your arms are behind your back and you're dropping down, are you still trying to like pull your shoulders away from your ears? Yes. So, well, if, you're, if your arms are behind you, I guess that's a great question. My arm, my elbow or my shoulders don't come near my ears. The main thing is you're getting this opening through the shoulders. So the intention there when you when you add the arms in in that way is to feel an opening in the shoulders. So I wouldn't get too like, oh, are they really too close? I wouldn't make that really the focus of the posture. If you're feeling a safe opening, like not painful opening in the shoulders, that should be good. Cool. Is, it, is it kind of like you're squeezing your scapulas together in the middle? Like that'll that'll automatic that should automatically happen as the arms start to come overhead. I don't mm -hmm. really think you have to do any extra squeezing. Eventually, as the as the arms start to move, you want to bring the palms together so that you're it's touching all the way at the wrist because it's pretty easy to like go further with the hands like this. And we start to bring it in, it gets pretty challenging. Yeah, so that's where we're going with that. Great questions. Okay. Next is standing bow pulling pose. If you're a beginner to this, great to use a wall. So I'm gonna start with the right hand up. So I'm gonna bring my, my left hand against the wall. If you've been practicing without a wall, don't use the wall, you're good, all right? So bring your right hand up, bring it out to the right, drop it down. So I'll show if anybody's using with the wall because I can't see some of the folks. And um, you might need a wall. Then, then uh, after that arms out to the side, I'm gonna grab from the inside. This is gonna be a challenge sometimes too. So what a lot of people need to do is grab from the outside. That's okay. 
eventually over time, I'm going to walk my fingers and hand eventually to the inside. Because when you bring it to the inside, then there's going to be more of this opening in the front of the shoulder and the chest as well as we start to kick back. So if you can grab just from the outside for now, great. It's awesome. Eventually, we'll be able to grab a little bit closer to the inside. All right. Left arm up. Bring the knees together to start. Want to make sure the right knee stays in a track. It doesn't wing out to the side. Inhale, stretch up and charge forward. So it's a kick and a stretch. Good. And this lineage of yoga, prefer the palm facing down just because you can get a little bit more, I guess, stretch with the palm facing down and the way the shoulder and the rotator cuff, how all of that's situated in there. So keep kicking, keep stretching. These are great. These are great. Keep your eyes straight ahead in a focal point. Stretch and kick. These are good. These are good. That's it. Look forward, stretch and stretch. Inhale, come back up. All right, this time left hand out, palm facing up. Bring it out to the left, drop it down. So you can grab your left foot, palm face up, hold from the inside at the ankle. And so you're going to make it a little more challenging for yourself if you hold at the foot. So really not a lot of need until um, really, yeah, or even at the ankle. If people start to lock out, which I don't know, maybe some of you will, um, then you'll grab a little bit closer to the shin eventually, but that could be yours. I'm not there yet. Inhale, right arm up, knees together, and he'll stretch up, charge forward, and kick back. So it's this kick and stretch at the same time. Kick and stretch at the same time. Breathe. That's it. Keep kicking. Keep stretching. That's it. Standing legs solid. Press through the heels. Still keep the big toe mounds down. Kick and stretch. Great, Josie. Kick and stretch. It's good, Pashka. It's good, Macy. Kick up one more time. Change. Solid, Liz. Solid. Awesome. Great. We will just do one set today. We're going to come to the back of our mat now for balancing stick or two linden dasana, similar to warrior three. If you have shoulder issues, I'll show you a variation. If not, it's great to help the shoulders open up a bit more with arms over the head. So bring your arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumb. Right foot step forward, straighten both legs, point the back toes, and just think of yourself as a seesaw as you come down. So arms stay with the ears, so arms and head together, body down, leg up, chest down, leg up. Stretch the fingertips forward, bring the chin away from the chest. Now, if the shoulders are uncomfortable, that's normal. If they're painful, bring your arms by your side, like airplane wings, but close tucked into the side. And inhale, come back up. All right, keep your arms up. Left foot step forward. Lock both legs, come down, arms head together. Everything parallel. I'm going to check you out now. Keep the arms with the ears, body down, leg up, chest down, leg up. Every, yes, these are good. Chin away from your chest. Shoulder blade scapula, feel like they're coming away from the body. Stretch and stretch. Inhale, come back up. Nice. Step back. Excellent. And arms down by your side. Awesome. We have one more balancing posture, then we're moving down to the floor. So tree, Rakasana. There are many different trees that you could do. This lineage does use the half lotus tree, which really helps open up the hips maybe a little bit more then the other tree with a with a knee in. For beginners, this is a great tree. With toes on the ground, hips can still gently come forward. You can gently press that right knee back. Um, if you've been coming for a while though, try the half lotus tree. So heel comes up high. If you have knee issues, it's always a thing where you could cradle the knee, really kind of like a baby. The right hand on the right knee, left hand on the right foot. And then over time, as the knee allows, you can start to bring the right knee down, hips forward, and then right hand up. Good. If you're on the, and you could definitely pick the other tree if you like and bring the arms up. So here, if you're doing this tree, always make sure there's this energy of the hips forward and right knee back. You could bring both hands up at a time. Make sure no duck butt though. When I'm being my duck butt, 
is I stuck my butt out. I got my hands up. Hands are really just decoration. They don't matter. But now I've lost this opening in the hip because I was so concerned about my hands. Hips forward, right knee back. Toe stand, you would bring your gaze down to the floor and bend the body down. From the lower spine towards the floor, bring all 10 fingertips down. So people can start to feel it out here a little bit. It's like, yeah, not so bad. Bend the knee. If it is pretty intense, you can come back to tree. And both hands come to the sides, bouncing on the fingertips, stomach and spine straight, one hand up at a time. The hips lift up, and then slowly come on back up. Awesome, and right leg down. Good, so this is meant to be hip opener, great for the knees, it's the last one we do in standing. Let's do the other side, pick up your left foot from underneath with the right hand, yeah. And if you wanna do the other tree, you're like, hey man, it's your Sunday night. <laughs> Just make sure you do the same on both sides. Yeah, one hand up maybe. Gently contract the left quadricep, shoulders back, jawbone back towards the neck. Lengthen up through the crown of the head as you root down through the pelvis. Going into toe, bring your gaze down to the floor and bend your body down. Good, all 10 fingertips touch, then bend the knee, bring your hands down to your heel, sit on the heel. Bring your hands to both sides, balance. One hand up at a time. Great page, steady. And when you're ready, come on up. And y'all, if you think it's a fail, it's so not a fail. <laughs> That's the thing about yoga. We think, oh man, I messed. No, you got that posture so great. You started to like take risks and grow. And like you fall out and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not dead. I'm okay. So good. So now we're going to lie down on our back. We are down on the floor. So this is where I encourage you to take. I mean, the mat is a, a great place to start taking risks. And a mat is where we can start to build up confidence. Like, oh man, I've never done that thing before. Doggone it, if I didn't just do it or get, get partway to it. And slowly over time starts to build up confidence. So that we don't, we get into a place where we don't care what other people think. And in a way, it's like we don't even really care what we think in a good way. Like we care about our form and the safety of our practice. But it's like, oh my gosh, I fell out. That's not even part, you know, that's not necessarily the whole, the whole thing of yoga. It's also finding grace for ourselves. And forgiveness and humor, too. All right. So moving on into... Or in Shavasana now. So Shavasana means dead body pose. And there's different ways to say it. Some say Savasana, Shavasana, Savasana. There's different ways, I guess, depending on what region um, your teacher is from, from India. My teacher would usually say Savasana. And we'd skedaddle right into that posture. <laughs> Breathe. And from here we go into Shupta Bhargasana, which is reclining gentle pose. Just bring in the soles of the feet together and letting the knees fall open. Your arms can be down by your side, palms facing up, or you can bring your palms facing down on your inner thighs. Either way. So yeah, it's just this way really in, with these postures now starting to calm the body, body down, letting it, letting it know kind of we're in this different plane, literally li different plane of being from up high to way down low. Next is Pavana Muttasana, wind removing pose. So bring your right leg up and grab your right leg a couple inches below the knee so that fingers interlock. So even the grip is important here. So we interlock all 10 fingers and pull the right knee down towards the right shoulder. Tuck the chin of the chest to try to get the neck flat. So there is this compression or this pressure that you're creating right now with your right thigh on your right 
really your right colon or your ascending colon. So that part of your digestive system and change, right leg down, left leg up. Grab your left leg a couple inches below the knee, pull the left knee down. Tuck your chin to your chest, get the neck flat. Pull down, you got it. Make sure both arms and elbows are touching. If you're not rocking too far over to one side, try to get the right shoulder back down on the mat, pull down. Here you're massaging the descending colon and change. Leg down, now both legs up. Now here, as we get both legs up, it's not a pull. You're really just trying to relax the tailbone back down to the mat. You are really even through this gentle grip, massaging your transverse colon. Tuck your chin to your chest, get the neck flat. So this posture works for the digestive system, just like y'all who've had babies. If they get stopped up, you do that little bicycle move, with their little cute little legs, pressing them up against their abdomen to help stimulate their digestive system and stimulate movement, right? And so same thing here, is what we're doing to ourselves, helping create just a, a happy digestive system and colon that's responsive and working and change. Both legs down, arms down, and just relax, breathe. You guys are looking good. All right, so here we're gonna get a little bit of core work in. So bring your legs straight up and bring your arms down by your side with your palms facing down. And we're just gonna just slowly lower the legs down to the ground by pointing and flexing and lower an inch. Point, flex, lower an inch. Point, flex, lower an inch. Point, flex, lower an inch. Now keep going with that point and flex. And make sure your spine, your tailbone, still feels pretty glued to the ground. If you feel a super arch coming on, don't go down any further. Just stay there where you are. I'm going to actually sit up here at about a 45 degree angle. And when you get to your lowest point with your whole spine still on the mat, give me 20 scissors. 20 scissors. So tiny, like, like uh, cuticle scissors. <laughs> like super tiny movements here with the feet over one another. Yeah, so super tiny scissors, 20 of them. Got it. And when you're complete, lower the legs all the way back down. And then bring your knees into your chest. And here we're gonna go ahead and get a reclined belly twist. So knees into the chest, bring your knees over to the right. Arms at a T, bring your gaze over to the left. Inhale back to center and exhale over to the other side. Knees to the left, gaze is to the right. And if you have a block, you feel like, oh, my legs are nowhere near to touching the floor. You could always bring a block underneath the bottom leg. It's totally good. And bring it back to center. Next is Janu Padasasana. Oh, Padasasana. <laughs> Excuse me. Bring your right ankle. No, I'm laughing so much at myself. This didn't come out. Sometimes the words don't come out. So bring your right ankle over the left knee. And bring your right hand through that gap and bring your hands on around or interlock your hands around the back of the left hamstring. This is foot to knee number one. And see if you can keep your shin parallel to the floor. Sometimes when you release, somehow the stretch, we lose it a little bit. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's okay. You still feel an intensity if you relax the left shin. A nice deep breath in. Pull the left leg towards you as you press the right knee away from you. And relax. Switch legs. So bring your right foot down to the mat. Left ankle comes over the knee. Interlock and grab behind the right hamstring. I'm going to bring my camera a little bit closer so y'all can see better. Yeah, take a nice deep breath in as you exhale. Pull the leg in as you press the knee away from you. Mm -hmm. 
and relax. Bring both feet to the mat. And I'm going to toe heel the left foot off to the left of my mat and let the left knee fall inward. So now my left inner knee is, is straight beyond my hip bone. So if I'm looking down my body, lift my head up a little bit, look down my body, my knee is in line with my hip, and my left leg is now at a 90 degree angle. Now if you've got that set up, bring your right ankle over your left knee for foot to knee two. And if you'd like a little bit more, if your body needs a little bit more, you can bring the left arm overhead. Good. So this is for your IT bands. I don't think we've reviewed that yet in anatomy, but this is uh, amazing long, uh, just structure that helps keep everything in line on the side of your body. And if you've been a runner for a while, sometimes you have noticed that it's become inflamed and it makes it really challenging um, to keep doing what you're doing. So this helps with that. And let's release that side. So the feet back onto your mat. Now toe heel your right foot off to the mat and let the right inner knee fall inward. And then bring the left ankle over the right knee. If you'd like more, you can bring your right arm overhead. And now, by now, the breath is starting to even out. Nice, fluid breath. You got it. And slowly release from there. And we go into happy baby. So grab the outsides of the feet and let the knees just start to fall towards you. You don't have to do any extra pulling. This posture does it all itself. Good. And let the legs fall nice and long back to our Shavasana. From here, we're going to get some roll ups in. So arms straight out and slowly start to roll up. Now, this is not really happening. <laughs> like, There's no way that's going to happen. Just bring your hands behind you and you could assist yourself up. Yeah, you can start there. Or you could even start with just a lift of the shoulders up and down. Lift the head and shoulders up and down. Good. So any of those options are fine. Keep going with it. And let's slowly lower all the way down and roll over to your tummy. Roll over to your tummy. The cobra, Bhujangasana. So in cobra, legs together. The so legs are zipped up together, hands right underneath your shoulders. So if I stood directly above you, I wouldn't be able to see your hands at all. So the arms are tucked in. So think of like a... Um, a bug with the legs or arms really tucked in so they're not they're not out to the sides legs stay together inhale breathing look up lift your upper body up so come up till your arms are at a 90 degree angle you can use pressure in the hands it's totally okay use all the strength that your spine has to come up and then any extra that you need to come up to that that um 45 degree angle or excuse me 45, 90 degree angle and bend in the arms breathe Good, and slowly lower down. We're going straight into locust, full locust. Arms out to the sides, legs together again. Inhale, breathing, look up. Everything lifts up. Everything lifts up. That's it. Yes, this is so good. Nice, Molly. Yes. So we bring the arms up, arms back, legs together. Get the chest up more, look up more. Go up, lift up, more up, and lower back down. Good. Nice. Hands underneath the shoulders. Let's go straight into child's pose. So shift into all fours. Then bring your hips back towards your heels for a child's pose. Let's take two more breaths here. Good. And our final few postures here. 
So come back to all fours and come to seated for head to knee with stretching pose. Right leg, out come, right leg comes out corner wise, left foot in. Arms over your head, turn to your right, grab your right foot. Grab your right foot, flex the foot. Heel might even come up off the ground. Beginners might need to bend the knee. That's totally fine. Tuck your chin to your chest, round down, forehead to knee. Good. If the knee is bent, that's fine. Over time, you'll gently push the knee down, forehead to knee, touching position. Bring your elbows in closer. Inhale, come back up, left leg out. Right leg in. Arms overhead, turn to your left, go down, grab your left foot. Good. Tuck your stomach in, tuck your chin to your chest, round down, forehead to knee. Good. And bend the knee up if you need to. And he'll come back up, both legs out in front of you, and grab your big toe. So there's different ways we can grab the feet, right? But we're really trying to not only, this is a deep hamstring stretch and eventually a spine stretch too. So we're not only trying to stretch those, we're trying to strengthen ankles, feet. So grab the big toes with the peace fingers, walk your hips back a few times to get the legs as straight as they can be. Knees still might be bent for some, that's fine. That's good, that's great. Look forward, stretch forward. Stretch forward. Now, if the legs are straight, start to bend the elbows down. So look at your feet, get all 10 toes coming back towards you. So no foot tacos. So the foot feet aren't folding in towards one another. Bring the pinky toes back towards you. How do you do that? You roll the inner ankles towards one another. So these minor details might not seem like much, but they really are. They really are. So it's postures like this that help strengthen the feet and ankles is why I feel like I'm the clumsiest trail runner of all time. And knock on wood, I've never had any major <laughs> incidents. And I fall all the time, all the time. I mean, I should have a thousand ankle rolled in injuries and haven't because even these little nuances like rolling the ankles in towards one another, bringing, shrinking the feet by bringing the pinky toes back towards me. That's what really would help strengthen the feet and ankles. So they're strong, yet flexible to handle whatever's coming ahead of them. All right, slowly come back up. Spine twist is next. Half Lord of the Fishes. So that's Arda Matsyandrasana. Bend the left leg with your left knee pointing straight ahead and bring your right foot over the knee corner. So you might feel like, ooh, I'm kind of rocking to one side. If you're rocking to one side, straighten the bottom leg. We want a straight spine. So just like our earlier postures, we want a straight spine before we twist the spine. Bring your right hand behind you. Bring your left arm up and over to the outside of the knee. Push the knee back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, turn, twist. Look all the way behind you. Yes. If you have both knees bent, that's fine. Point the left toes if the left leg is bent. Stretch up, the stretch the spine up towards the ceiling. Exhale, turn, twist again and change. Switch legs. Now right leg on the floor. So either right leg is bent or right leg is straight, either way. Bring the left foot over the knee corner, heel touching the hip. So right heel touching the left hip, point the left toe. Bring your right arm up and over to the outside of the knee, push the knee back, turn your wrist, grab your right knee with your right hand. So make sure the ankle is at the bony part of the knee. So not back at the meaty part of the thigh. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn, twist. Look all the way behind you. That's it, eyes over the left shoulder. Turn, twist, and twist. Nice, and change. All right, this will be our final breathing. So I don't think we've done this. We actually eliminated this next breathing exercise from our class, and you'll see why. So we've gone to um, a, bre a different breathing pattern. There's so many breathing patterns that you can do. These are just um, the original ones that, that uh, I've learned with this series. Again, there's so many more. But this breathing, some call it breath of fire, but we keep, and breath of fire has the mouth closed to help build up fire. We open the mouth to help release the fire. So we're doing at the end of class, we're releasing the fire, releasing the heat from our body and allowing it to, allowing our body to prepare for Shavasana and the rest of our nice quiet time this evening. So to do this, you could sit this way with the knees and feet together and you're sitting on the heels. If that's super uncomfortable, you can sit down cross-legged. 
Just make sure either way your spine is straight. Spine is straight. So hands on the legs, arms straight, elbows locked. And you wanna do that sort of as a brace because what it looks like, I'll show you from the side. Actually, bring my shirt up a little bit so you can see the belly. So I keep my arms straight. My arms are kind of like scaffolds to keep all of this straight because if I don't, what can happen is all this kind of just starts going uncontrollably everywhere. So I'm trying to keep the spine straight. That's what we want to do here at the end in every posture, but see like this too. But arms straight, spine straight, relax the belly. So this breathing exercise, you blow it very firmly by the lips, pull the stomach in and out. There's no inhale, only exhale. So the inhale start, starts to happen automatically, kind of just like a vacuum effect. So try not to think too much about it. We'll do a few of these and this will be our final breathing to end our practice. So arms straight, elbows locked, relax your shoulders, relax your abdominal wall, just let it hang. Let them all hang out. Good. Swallow a couple of times, look straight ahead. And let's begin. And that's enough. Turn around, relax on your back. I miss that breathing, but as you can see, we don't we, we don't do that one in public anymore because it's like, hey, my fumes are going everywhere. So keeping the fumes to ourselves. Let's take a shavasana here. Oh, we went a little bit over. Uh, it's 8.05, so if you gotta go, thank you. If you can stay and if you have any questions, please stay. But first, if you can, final shavasana. And we will learn so much about this posture. Like, what is there to learn about this posture? So much there is. I just look like Yoda. So much there is. So what's happening now is your endocrine system is really having a heyday. So it's in charge of all these hormones and all of this work that you've done within your practice of the last hour, starting to send these hormones, these signals off to different systems in your body to do the work, to start the healing. So you've done the work. It just creates the signals and and hey, this is what happened. So let, let's make this process happen of healing and strengthening into the body. So it's, this is the point where it's, it's basically like receiving your prize or your paycheck. So you always want to spend time here in Shavasana. Let's take a few more breaths here. Allow this normal rhythm of breath to just return to you and fill you. There's some translations in different languages of breath meaning the same as spirit. This could be a time of being completely open and inviting the great spirit. And slowly start to move. Uh, maybe fingertips, toes. You can come towards the chest and you can roll to either side in a fetal position. 
and press into your hot top hand to push yourself up to a seated position. So much amazing class. Ah. So as we took that moment to invite the spirit or just ask for the divine, divine spirit, just be thankful for the presence. So the presence of the spirit in me recognizes and honors the presence of the spirit in you. As we say in Sanskrit, namaste, 